Today on Hands On Wellness, we're going to take a look at a product that's not necessarily an earbud, but it sure looks like one. <laughs> Stay tuned. Hands On Wellness is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. This episode of Hands On Wellness is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. For three extra months free with the one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash how. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands On Wellness here on Twit TV. I hope you all are doing well. I am unbelievable, as always. This is a podcast where I'd like to share with you different tips in tech that are going to help you get a better grip on your personal wellness. Because, folks, we have so many different tech devices available to us. Why not use that tech to help us get a better grip on our personal wellness? First off, I want to say welcome to everyone that is joining us for the first time here on the network. I appreciate the support. Go ahead and do me a favor and subscribe in whatever podcast app you're using right now. I don't care if it's Spotify or Apple Podcast or what have you. Go ahead and hit subscribe to Hands on Wellness and check out all of our previous episodes and let us know what you think of the show. If you're having issues finding us on your podcast app, you can check out our website, twit.tv slash H-O-W. That's twit.tv slash H-O-W for Hands on Wellness. Appreciate all the support and I appreciate you all helping us grow the hands on wellness community. All right. So now let's go ahead and get into this week's episode. OK, so if you're watching the video feed of this show, you see that I have these little monitors in my ears. And that's basically just allowing me to hear myself as I speak into this mic. And then when I'm not wearing these, I'm usually wearing some nice earbuds or something as I'm puttering around the house or puttering through the studio, working on things and listening to other podcasts and listening to music and audiobooks and things like that. And of course, especially if I'm listening to music, I have that tendency to turn that volume up. Well, that's not good. We shouldn't do that uh, because what happens is over time, we are continuing to degrade the uh, uh, the ability of our ears to hear properly. And uh, I got to be honest with you, some days I think I'm struggling a little bit to hear the conversations between myself and the family or sometimes hear things on the television screen if I'm watching something on Netflix or Amazon Prime or what have you. Well, there are some things that we can consider in the tech space, consumer tech space, that may help us out just a touch as far as being able to hear that TV screen in your living room or just hearing the conversations uh, if you're sitting in a coffee house and, or, and just taking your phone calls and making your phone calls sound a little bit clearer. And that is the Olive Smart Ear. And this is just a simple little device that looks like our standard earbud. And it's just one earbud. This thing is available for $2.99 at the time of recording, but let me tell you just a little bit more about it from a technical standpoint. What exactly is the Olive Smart Ear? Okay, again, I said it's shaped like a standard earbud and it typically feels and looks just like a standard earbud. But what are you getting besides that? It's not just a, a receiver to connect to your smartphone and listen to your audiobooks and podcasts and things of that nature. But it's an extra device that's going to be able to amplify certain uh, certain frequencies for you so things can sound a little bit better and, and you can hear a little bit better. Most importantly, it helps you to hear conversations better. It helps you to hear what's going on in the television a little bit better because sometimes those things are just hard to hear with a bunch of the ambient sound going on around you. I've been playing around with this device and trying it out in different scenarios. And it's quite fascinating. The, it starts out when you get this device, you have to configure it to where it was going to work perfectly for your hearing profile, because some people are not going to hear things the exact same way. Some people's ears hear lower frequencies a little bit better than someone else's that where they're probably hearing more of a higher frequency. So this device has to be calibrated in the app that it uses on Android or iOS walks you through the calibration within about maybe three to four minutes. It's not a long process and it calibrates it for both of your ears, 
granted you are using just one of these earbuds uh, for the process and it only comes with one in the package, but they do allow you to calibrate this for both ears just to make sure everything is going to work properly and fit for you and your listening profile. After you have it connected to your device via Bluetooth, fire up the app and set, set it up to be uh, what's, what's more so for your particular environment and scenario at that time. The default settings, in my opinion, actually works fairly well. It has a, a, a setting for specifically for conversations. It also has a setting specifically for uh, a TV watching experience or a movie watching experience. And in my experience, I didn't necessarily care for those settings. I think the default settings are a little bit better uh, as far as the, the quality of the sound. In addition to having those presets, it has a little equalizer in there as well. You can tap on that and set the equalizer to uh, amplify or, or attenuate the different frequencies depending on what you're hearing at the time. That it, it can be a little bit tricky doing that because sometimes you may go a little bit too far on pushing those frequencies and you may end up picking up the additional sound that you didn't really want to pick up. So again, in my experience, using the default preset seems to be the better way to go. Now, before I tell you a little bit more about my experience, I want to take a few seconds to thank this week's sponsor, the fine folks at ExpressVPN. This episode of Hands-On Wellness is brought to you by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN lets you access the internet as if you're in a different country. It's fast, simple, and you can stream everything in HD quality with zero buffering. Stream from Netflix, Amazon Prime, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, and many more. Fire up the app, change your location, hit connect, and then refresh. Me, I've been trying to check out some good old British comedy. I've been watching Flea over on Amazon Prime, and ExpressVPN allowed me to connect to the UK uh, servers, and boy, it was super quick. If you use my link right now at expressvpn.com slash how, you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash how. All right, so let me tell you a little bit more about my experience with the Olive Smart Ear. Okay, so it again, talking about the different presets on there, those are great. Let me tell you exactly what I heard. As I had the device in my ear, you have a amplitude control, just an overall volume control uh, to lift up the sounds that you need to hear. So when you put it on, turn it on by default, it, the volume control is set very low, like at zero or one. And when you do that, you may not hear a difference. You may just, just feel like, huh, I just have this earbud in my ear and there's nothing happening. But if you ramp that up to roughly 10 and, and you, you start to notice a difference, it'll go all the way up to 100 on the setting. But if you ramp it up to 10, you, you, you'll definitely start to hear a difference. What did I hear? OK, so my first example is I wanted to try out just watching television in the bedroom because Queen Pruitt might have been ready to go to bed and didn't necessarily want to hear the television. So I had to turn the television down. So I'm not disturbing her while she sleeps, but I still want to watch the show because, you know, I don't go to bed very early or anything like that. And I still want to watch television. So I could turn up the volume on the Olive Smart Ear, leave it in the default preset and still be able to hear the conversations on the screen quite nicely. The sound quality of it may be a little bit tinny, but it's still something that, that's pretty audible and clear where I can understand what the conversations are. Uh, if you change the settings to the, you know, the preset, like I said, for watching TV, I found that it picked up a little bit too much of the ambient sound. In the bedroom or pretty much throughout the house, we have fans going just to try to circulate air. And I noticed when I try to use those different presets, I could definitely hear the whirl and swirl of air more so than anything, which was totally taken away from my experience that with me trying to enjoy the television show or the movie that I was trying to watch at that particular time. So just be mindful of that. Uh, audio quality as far as listening to your audiobooks or podcasts or things like that, it's not going to be a high fidelity sound. Okay. It's not that you can listen to your, your, your content without a problem just because it's a Bluetooth connection and it's just like any other bit of headphones or earbuds out there, but it's just not necessarily 
tuned, if you will, for listening to high fidelity audio. So don't even I wouldn't put too much stock in that. But what it does do is allow you to enjoy your conversations with people standing in front of you or just on the other side of the room a little bit better if you had to, depending on the scenario. I tried this in an extreme setting. I went and played uh, played poker here locally just just to, you know, get get my mind off some of the things going on around here. And I tried it out just to see how it would sound if I could hear the people uh, and the attendees in the room, if they had something to say to us. And it was a big challenge because people are wearing their mask nowadays. I hope you're wearing your mask. Uh, people are wearing their mask nowadays. So it, uh, um, you don't get the option to read lips. So you really have to sort of lean in to hear what people are saying. Testing this device. I didn't have to lean in as much, but I did have to turn that amplitude up, the volume up just a little bit so I could hear a little bit more because there was so much ambient sound in that room between people shuffling chips and just talking to to one another and having a good time. It was hard to hear that conversation. But when I turned the volume up on the Isle of Smart Ear, I could hear what was being said to me a lot better. So it is nice uh, on that standpoint. So performance on this thing. It's pretty good. You're going to get about 20 hours of battery life. It's going to charge up via micro USB dongle. Pretty standard, nothing to it. It's a touch interface. You just tap it to power on and hold, tap and hold to power it off and connect. It's pretty straightforward use on that. Really good performance. This is definitely something that's going to help with your conversations. I keep stressing that because I don't want you to assume that this is a hearing aid. This is not a hearing aid. This is not something that is considered a medical device. This is strictly a tool that's going to help anyone be able to amplify uh, particular uh, frequencies and sounds that they're wanting to hear. In, in particular, conversations and television and things of that nature. This would be great for yourself. This would be great for the elderly that, you know, they may not be able to get uh, access to getting hearing aids. And this, this could help them out just from day to day conversation. And it's probably going to cost a little bit less than the high end hearing aids that are available through your medical professional. All right. So again, you can get the Olive Smart Ear on, uh, online for two ninety nine at the time of this recording. Check back here and there just to make sure there aren't any deals going on because there's been a lot of deals happening with a lot of the tech nowadays. We'll have a link in our show description and show notes just in case you're interested. All right. I appreciate Olive sending this over to me to check out. And now I want to send a, a call to action to you to let me know, hey, what are you working on as far as your personal wellness during this interesting several months that we've had here around the world? Shoot me an email at how at twit.tv to share what you've been working on as far as your personal wellness. And if you're having any good progress or if you're digressing a little bit or if you just want to share, hey, man, I'm killing it out there. I'm really doing well. Send that over to me. I'll be more than happy to celebrate with you and send you a virtual high five. All right. Thank you all again for your tremendous support. Thank you all for sharing hands-on wellness with all of your friends and family. Now, my message to you, please be well, wear your mask and do well. And yes, I'm still waiting on justice for Brianna Taylor. Y'all take care. I'm Jason Howell, host of Tech News Weekly here on Twit.tv, along with my co-host, Micah Sargent. Each and every week, we talk to people who are making and breaking the tech news. It could be journalists writing amazing tech stories, it could be experts, it could be the sources of the stories themselves, developers, you name it. We bring them onto the show and we talk to them about why their story is resonating with the world. You can watch and subscribe by going to twit.tv slash TNW. Make sure you do that and you won't miss a single episode. We'll see you there.